Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. So today what we're going to do is actually create a custom fence. Um, this is going to be a larger project so it's going to take a while to actually teach you guys how all this works. Uh, thankfully the script and everything I have set up is extremely easy to configure and uh, install so a lot of the hard stuff is already done. Um, now how the fence works is uh, we have a regular strength, uh, regular fence piece like this and a fence gate. So I've added both things that we've created here and they will basically use MBT data to um, tell the blocks uh, next to it uh, to connect. So basically what's happening is when we place it down, it's testing for the four corners here, here, here and here if um, there is a block with the same NBT tag to basically update the block. So this will trigger an update event um, which will um, constantly run on a one tick update for the blocks that are basically with that NBT tag. So these fences have an update tick every set, every tick to basically determine if it has a specific tag to update. If it's true, then it's going to change the block state. Um, again, it's going to be testing for all the different rotations and stuff like that for how the actual fence works in normally. So if we place down a few of these uh, fences like this so, and then connect it uh, to a fence gate. Uh, you can actually open and close the fence gate and walk through it if you want. Uh, at a closed state, it, you can't walk through it. And if we place down some animals in here, uh, chickens are pretty good, have pretty good AI, so we'll just demonstrate with that if I can find it. Uh, chicken. So we'll place a couple of those down. Um, as you can see, basically they they determine that the fence is actually a real fence and they won't try to escape from it. Um, now leads and stuff work the exact same way as you would expect them to. You can actually tie them to the fence because we have uh, the fence uh, set up to a MBT tag or a Minecraft tag. So you can actually use leads on these fences as well. And uh, if you left the gate open, these um, chickens will eventually decide to leave the, the gate. You can also bring entities through the gate and they'll walk fine, walk right through it and they'll be fine. So as you can see that they, it works just like a regular gate as well. All right, uh, with that being said, let's hop into block bench and I'll explain a little bit more. So I have uh, four main folders in the workspace uh, that I've provided. Uh, well, the zip folder that I've provided, not really a workspace yet. Uh, under Blockbench, these are all the different uh, workspaces for the Blockbench models. Um, the rotation for them are very uh, specific and will require to be um, customized on those specific rotations. Uh, for this particular quarter, um, as you can see, it's facing um, north east, so north east. And if you're going to be redesigning your fence post and everything like that, then you're going to have to also make the rotation on the northeast uh, rotation for this block state. Uh, you can customize the the actual fence however you want to make it look. It's just it requires. Um, to be facing this uh, rotation in order to work. Um, again, I have added all the different block states, including the fences as well, into the uh, block bench uh, folder that you guys can explore and make your own models for block states. Mcrater, I have all the procedures that you're gonna need as well as a notes file with some useful information. Uh, you can browse that at your own will. Um, those are all the procedures that we're gonna to have to technically set up. It's not that complicated to do. And the workspace is always in the um, workspace folder as well. Uh, models have been provided and the texture as well. So with that being said, let's hop back into Imprator. So the first block that you're actually gonna to want to create is your fence straight. And uh, you want to make sure that you import 
all your your texture and your uh, block states under the uh, JSON format. So you want to select this one here and then import your uh, JSON uh, models for your fence, all your fence gate uh, block states as well as your fence gates uh, or your fence block states and your fence gate block states. So when you have all that done, uh, you can go over here, you can create your first block and you want to set the fence gate uh, or the fence to straight and then your rotation to south, west, north, east, cutout for the transparency, you want to enable transparency. And uh, the only other thing that you're going to need to worry about is the height really. Uh, you want to play around with the actual block dimensions and get them working to your actual model. I can't really give you exact um, sizes that you're going to need for your model because obviously not everyone's fence is going to be the exact same, but your height and um, minimum height will always have to be 0 and 1.5. So when you have all that set up, uh, you can click next. You can just use one texture here and that'll be fine. Uh, for the fence straight, I've just named it fence straight. You can name it whatever you want. This is just for easy reference. Um, the material is wood. I have set the creative inventory to decorations. Sound on step is wood. The hardness and resistance is two and three. I uh, have it set to an axe and it's going to be dropping itself and uh, the harvest level is set to zero. So that's pretty much all across the same of the blocks. Um, now we're going to need also to have an update tick for all our blocks um, except for fences to one tick. So make sure that your tick rate is set to one. Uh, we're going to use the material uh, for the on the map set to wood. Uh, this can be whatever you whatever material your fence is made out of. Uh, for wooden fences, you're going to need to set the flammability to five and normal rotate or normal reaction to being pushed. And again, for all your um, all your fences and fence gates and stuff like that, they're going to need to use tile entities. So make sure to check this box and uh, we'll get into procedures in a little bit and uh, there is no generation properties on any of these so when you have all when you have your straight part set up uh, you can move on to your other uh, block states you need corners and your ends and stuff like that again pretty much the same thing uh, it's just a different model uh, the only difference is we're basically having it so it's not in the creative inventory and that we're dropping the straight version of the um, of the actual fence. So we're dropping the main straight um, fence model itself. Uh, update tick is set to one and all the other settings are the exact same. Again, NBT uh, or tile entity needs to be enabled. Um, one thing that you want to do is set your slots to zero and set uh, these two here to disabled. And I think this would be a good time to explain the procedures now. So we'll start with uh, the one block is placed by player. Um, now this is a little bit more complicated, um, but I have added notes to the the blocks being placed. So all you need to do is basically find the the um, the, the place block uh, procedure, and then look up the the note, and then it will tell you what kind of fence um, piece that you're going to need to add to it. Uh, this is this particular one is a fence X corner. So we're going to make sure that it has the fence X corner um, set up. But um, before I get ahead of myself, uh, I'm going to show you how to import the procedures because there's a very specific way how to do that. So we're going to delete all those. Uh, we're going to delete these and or local variables. And I'm going to show you from scratch how to import all the procedures uh, for this particular uh, project. 
So the first thing that you're going to need to do is click the local variable uh, plus icon. You want to give this a fence group tag name. This is just a placeholder for what um, we're going to be using for the local variables. And we're going to set this to string. So that will be always your first group that the group's always going to be the one that you need at the top. The, the one after you've made the group is going to be your update tick. So this needs to be done second. So we're going to go fence update and then we're going to select string again and we're going to import that. So that's perfect. Uh, again, group will be always the first your your group block, your group variable will always be the first one at the top. Your fence update will always be the, the one on the second. So make sure that you name them something that you can remember. So now that we have that set up, we can basically import the uh, procedure that I've provided. So fence blocks, um, our fence block is placed by, and then we're gonna import that. And then as you can see, the local variables are already configured because we set it up first. So we just need to drag that onto here and all the notes and stuff are already added. So again, um, the only other thing that you're gonna need to do is basically update the um, blocks that are here. Uh, you just need to click on the little help icon right here and then it'll tell you uh, what blocks uh, you need to add to that group. So do that after you've made all your blocks. Um, now the when block destroyed by explosion and player, you will want to import it the same way for the procedure. You want to set up your local variables and um, you're also going to want to um, make sure that the tag name for the group and the um, tag name for the update group is uh, the same as your other fences as well. So if you're making say a wooden fence uh, that is kind of gothic style, then you would type the, 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 um, the tag that you would want to connect to those blocks in here. Um, I do have some recommendations for uh, tag names just for multi, like support for more mods and stuff. Uh, soil fences, foliage fences, uh, wood fences, stone fences, metal fences. Those are all names that would be very generic and allow other mods to connect to easily. Um, this basically just holds the properties of allowing fences to connect um, and update each other. So it's recommended to use uh, generic names like this to basically connect to your, allow other mods to connect to your fences as well. Um, I basically just left it at modded fences uh, just for the tutorial to show you that you can basically name them whatever you want. Just remember that if you change the name that isn't generic, like something like this, um, people might not always be able to connect to your fences. It's just how it's gonna be. So with the update tick, or sorry, um, with the fence block destroyed by explosion or player, uh, these ones you don't actually need to configure at all. These are already pre-configured. Uh, you don't need to add any blocks or anything like that. Just import it and you're fine. For the update tick, uh, there is uh, some blocks that need to be updated. So again, you can click on the little help icon and you will have the information that you need to basically set the rotation for, or the block state that you need for um, that particular um, particular item. Uh, the rest of it, you don't need to really worry about too much. Um, it would take too much time to explain how all that works. It's already getting a pretty long video, so I'm just going as fast as I can. Uh, just make sure that you import your local variables first and then import your procedure. When you have all that set up, uh, what you can do is just click next and move on. So the fence gates are a little bit different. I'm gonna have them a little bit notes and stuff uh, set up a little bit um, or change it a little bit for the notes and stuff. There's some work that I still need to do on the procedure side of things. 
uh, fence gates. Um, these are basically the same. The closed version is basically the same thing as the straight version. Uh, we basically are making the fence closed version our main um, our main gate. So we don't need to change these two here. Um, the height again is 1.5 and the minimum Y coordinates is zero. And uh, the update tick is set to zero. We don't actually need an update tick for this. Um, it might be recommended to have an update tick. I haven't noticed that it needs one, but it might be uh, recommended to actually set up the update tick for the fences as well. Uh, to do that, you would just um, basically set this to one and then you would make sure that the NBT is already enabled. It should be by default. And then you would just add the fence gate um, update tick. So fence update tick, and then it should automatically uh, detect and everything like that. If not, if that doesn't work, then um, you might, uh, then I might need to add a little bit extra work on this a little bit more, but for now, um, I don't have the update tick enabled for the procedure. If I just notice that it needs to be added, then I will work on it and then update the download itself. Um, for the fence right clicked, um, this is a little bit different uh, procedure. Uh, we're basically just opening and closing the door depending on the rotation. These blocks will need to be very specific to what ones need to be added and test for. I'll add notes to all these uh, uh, before I upload the video or the workspace to the, um, the file server. But uh, that's basically just for the opening and closing. Um, this is the same exact same procedure as the actual um, regular fence one. Again, the tags need to be the same across for all the fence gates and stuff like that, as well as fence posts and block states. So same way you would import the, the procedure as well as the other one. And uh, block one block placed by player, uh, same thing. Uh, the only difference is there is no um, actual detection for updating the block itself. We're just basing it on the rotation of the player placing it down. So you don't actually need to configure anything here. All this is pre-configured. All you need to do is basically um, import it and the rest of it's fine. So make sure you set up your local variables first and then import the procedure. So with that being said, um, don't set up the redstone. I noticed there was a little bit of bugs with it, uh, setting it to the right click event. Uh, so don't do that. Um, I'm not sure what the issue is right now, but I haven't been able to pinpoint what the cause of it is. So just don't set up the redstone connection to it. Um, other than that, uh, the fence gate open is the exact same thing. Uh, the only difference is we need to enable entities to walk through the block so entities can go between the block and stuff. That's the only difference and the um, it's not set to any inventory and it's targeting when it's broken is basically giving giving the uh, closed fence to the player and the uh, creative pick item is the closed fence as well. Uh, you would want to set this to update tick if you needed to set the update tick, but um, again, I'm not sure if that's going to work. I haven't tested it yet, so just leave it to zero. Uh, MBT needed to be enabled, and all these other procedures are fine. Now, the last thing that you need to do is create a fences uh, tag, and to set that up, uh, what you need to do is go to tags, tag, name it fences and then what you want to do is set the make sure the tag name is fences with an s not fence it needs to be with an s and then you need to set the namespace to minecraft blocks and then you want to add all your regular fence block states and your 
gate or your fence gate closed block state, but not your fence gate open block state. Uh, what this will do is allow, basically fix an issue with AI tasks uh, or pathfinding where they'll render it as a regular fence and they won't try to hop out of it or anything like that. This is all required to basically get the fence working um, and have the mechanics, the same mechanics as a regular fence. So make sure that your blocks are all set up here. Other than that, um, the only other thing that you need to do is basically test it, make sure that it works, and uh, you saw at the beginning of the video that it does. So um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.